Wallace had gone from being Secretary of Agriculture to FDR's Vice President. Though his falling out with Rorick had happened some years earlier, the Guru letters would surface once he decided to run for President. They had been obtained by cantankerous news columnist Westbrook Pegler through an unidentified source. Pegler, along with H.L. Mencken, questioned Wallace in a news conference about the letters. But he was, at best, evasive and refused to answer their questions in a direct manner. The letters were signed H.A.W., assumed to be Henry Asgard Wallace. In one of the letters, Wallace allegedly wrote of curing his headaches at formal dinners by rubbing his forehead with a Tibetan amulet. In another letter, he said to Rorick, I have been thinking of you holding the casket, the sacred, most precious casket, and I have thought of the new country going forth, and I have thought of the admonition, await the stone, the sign of Shambhala. There's these letters, and they, and they indicate very strongly, no matter how you want to interpret them, that he was his teacher. Wallace went on to say, we await the stone, and we welcome you again to this glorious land of destiny. The stone he's referring to is the artifact that cipher expert Buff Perry has been following for many years now. We learned about this mysterious stone during our first interview with Perry at Manly Hall's Philosophical Research Society, where a statuette of Nicholas Rorick holding a casket like the one described by Wallace sits on one of the tables in the library. It was first mentioned to us by Dr. Obadiah Harris. Now, so, uh, Dr. Harris, can you tell us about this uh, the statue here? Oh, well, this would, this, this, would be a, this would be a very favorite thing to, to Manny Hall. This is Nicholas Rorick, who lived in the early part of, um, well, actually, he lived even, even in the 20th century up until 1947. There, there's a Rorick Museum in New York, and this, of course, is of Mr. Rorick himself. Then, then there's, there's this little casket, and in this casket symbolizes uh, what he was given, which is the foundation stone of America. And uh, we don't know where that stone is today. Uh, I think that um, um, Buff Perry knows a little more about where it might be now. We then asked Buff Perry to explain the stone in relation to the statue of Nicholas Rorick. The statue is based on a painting his wife Helena painted of him. The casket he's holding with, with a, a uh, uh, cloth fabric, a kind of sacred appearing to be Tibetan cloth fabric over it, um, is a casket that contains a stone a stone that variously has been called the Chintamani in Sanskrit, meaning the stone of wisdom, uh, the Bethel or Bethel stone, which was Jacob's pillow stone uh, that you read about in Torah in, in the Old Testament, um, which became known as a Bethel stone uh, because it was uh, used at the location of what became the town of Bethel, so Bethel. So this stone um, has a, an incredible history to it, that has only recently really surfaced uh, in terms of how it ended up in the hands of Nicholas Rorick, where it came from. There can be no question that this stone in the casket consumed Rorick through the latter part of his life. His paintings are filled with the repeated imagery of it. And here you have a man delivering that casket up again. It appears in, you know, it seems like almost all of Rorick's paintings. These are uh, supposed to be his family and ascendant masters uh, carrying the Rothenberg casket in which that stone was kept. Rorick called the stone the treasure of the world. Even his wife, Helena, is pictured in this portrait which hangs in the Rorick Museum with the casket resting next to her, 
something she and her husband had received under mysterious circumstances in 1923. Everything changed once they received this. But why would this artifact be of interest to FDR's vice president, Henry Wallace? And how could it relate to the design of the Great Seal on the dollar bill? As Buff mentioned earlier, the stone is said to be the pillow stone of Jacob, upon which he had his dream of a ladder that stretched from earth to heaven, with the angels of God ascending and descending on it. The ladder itself is a recurring symbol in secret societies, especially Freemasonry. Master Mason Albert Pike wrote extensively of Jacob's Ladder in his book, Morals and Dogma, and even suggests that Jacob's Ladder may in fact have been a pyramid. The book of Genesis tells us that when Jacob awoke from his dream, he took the stone and set it up for a pillar, and he said, This stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. As a result, some have come to believe that God, or the power of God, resides in the stone itself. From there, the legends vary, but one account says that the prophet Jeremiah took the stone and carried it into Scotland where eventually the Scottish kings were crowned upon it. In late March 1506, Robert the Bruce was enthroned as King of Scots at Scone in Perthshire. An old Scottish poem says, Except old seers do feign and wizard wits be blind, the Scots in place must reign where they this stone shall find. Eventually, the stone was kept at Scone Palace and was hence called the Stone of Scone. To this day, the Scots also call it the Stone of Destiny. In the year 1296, King Edward I of England captured the stone and it was taken to Westminster Abbey for the crowning of English monarchs. In this picture, you can see the stone itself in the compartment beneath the coronation chair, a chair that was specifically built to house the Stone of Destiny. The last monarch to be crowned upon it was Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. But in 1997, the English supposedly returned the ancient stone to the Scots, with the understanding that the future monarchs of England would continue to be crowned upon it. Today, the stone is said to be housed inside Edinburgh Castle in Scotland. There is even a self-guided tour where visitors can view the Stone of Destiny along with the Honours of Scotland, the crown jewels of Scottish royalty. According to the tour guide we spoke with while there, this is the legendary stone. But if this is true, then how could the stone have ended up inside a casket in the hands of Nicholas Rorick? The answer given by Buff Perry and others, is that the stone currently at Edinburgh is a fake. Uh, the stone of scone, because uh, the, the one that's actually in Edinburgh Castle is a fake, and most Scots know it, because once the English came and stole it once, they were never going to be stolen again. <laughs> so the one that's actually in the castle is not real. Others, like Alex Salmond, the first minister of Scotland, claimed that the stone taken by the English king in 1296 was a fake and that the real stone was somehow hidden away secretly by the Scots. Exactly where the real stone of destiny is today and how it may have changed hands over the centuries continues to be a matter of debate. Nevertheless, its importance is recognized by nearly all occult societies 
in the world today.